All right, guys, it's Rabia. And it's Matt. And this is Sounds Like on Amazon's TV. Yes, it is. There's music going on and we need to stop. Basically, who are we sounding like today? Today we're going to try and sound like the ultimately incredible... Incredibly, Grunge master. Yeah, the king of uh, Kurt Cobain. Rest in peace, man. Yeah, so obviously that guy, Kurt Cobain, he was in Nirvana. Um, and then sadly isn't with us anymore. Um, no, they were kind of the leading sound of the grunge movement, I would say. Um, most commonly saw playing the Fender Jaguar, was it, or the Jazzmaster? Well, the Mustang and Jaguar, I think, he had, yeah. he had a bunch of different ones. But also, he's famous for smashing up gear, so got yeah. through quite a lot of different stuff. I read he had a fascination with kind of pawn shop style gear. Basically, really cheap stuff right. that he could break and then get again, or get something different. Okay. And he used hi-fi speakers as amps, he used clean preamps. Wow. He used lots of different stuff. So. Um, but we're going to try and get his sound and hopefully some gear that kind of fits the bill. Yeah. Um, for our budget of fifteen hundred pounds. Fifteen hundred pounds. We're going to pinpoint particular riffs, maybe sections of songs, because it's a lot easier to pinpoint those sounds and those tones than it would be to do a general overview of the Kurt Cobain sound. Yeah. Hopefully, do it justice. Essentially. Let's do it. All right. That's a squire. Now this is a squire. I can't say exactly how much it is right this second. However, my first and initial impression is it's a little bit too glitzy and glam for Kurt Cobain. We got Jaggies and Jazzmasters all for about £300. This one's cool. The green one's cool as well. The green one is a slightly more Kurt Cobain. Although surf, he was a darker blue, wasn't he? Surf green. He had a few. You've got all this cool stuff as well. Oh, basically, loads of switching that currently I have no idea what it does. <laughs> I can find out and it might do the job. What do you reckon? Yeah. It's not a bad shout. Oh, we go for some Duncan Design wide space pickups. And this is slightly easier because we've got the three-way toggle. It doesn't look bad, what do you think? Yeah. What's going to be more Kurt Cobain-y? I don't know, we need to... We found this, what, this Fender Jaguar. This is slightly an orthodox approach for Matthew and myself. It is. Because this is probably the most expensive guitar we've chosen for a Sounds Like. Yeah, so we're hoping that if we take this Jaguar for £800, that the 700 pounds we have left, we'll be able to get something loud and good amp-wise, and then probably a couple of pedals. We found ourselves in front of Vox. We're in the Vox section. Um, he did play Vox for a bit, as well as kind of just a load of random stuff. We spent quite a lot on the guitar. We have. It's quite easy to well, just yet. go and get something solid state, and then just go, ah, oh, we'll worry about it later. But to be honest, I think there's still enough room in the budget to go with something half decent on amp front, and then buy some pedals that are slightly cheaper. But that's a, that's it's such a, a tiny little speaker. It is a valve amp though. It is valve, but it's got a 10 inch speaker in it. It's probably a little bit small. And then there's the 4 watt 12 inch speaker combo, but 4 watts isn't going to be gigable, and that's one of the remits of this whole program is that it has to be a gigable rig. Oh, I'm just aiming the captain. to say. <laughs> Um, Kurt Cobain, what kind of amp would he use? Kurt Cobain, you guys he was bo that, wasn't well. he boogie? Kurt Cobain. He had a preamp. Yeah. Oh, did he do the whole... Yeah. Right, okay, okay, okay. okay. Because we've got an £800 Jaguar and we're thinking of an amp that's going to sort it out and do the Kurt Cobain thing with a couple of pedals. Guest appearance right here. So we were thinking, we were, thinking, we were on the Vox. I, I don't think Vox. You don't? No, I don't think Vox. I think it was very American sounding. With built in distortion? Yeah, probably. I think if you've got a good distortion pedal, I mean, what you want is is a boogie kind of vibe. Black Star HT um, 40 or HT 20 would be good. That could be a good idea. See, friend of mine, Sandy. Lee throwing the curveballs in there. I'm sorry. Anyway, I'm helping a customer. I've got to go. <laughs> Bye. You'll sound fat enough, won't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's go check out okay, Blackstar. Let's, let's do it. Blackstars. We found ourselves in the land of Blackstar and Marshall. The predicament that we're in right now, ladies and gentlemen, is that. Because of the nature of the gear that Kirk Bain used, we can't get hold of that stuff. Like, we can't get a boogie preamp mm. on that budget, and we also, we can't use hi-fi speakers. So there's plenty of stuff that we can't do. So we need to just make an assumption on an amp that might achieve that tone. And it is a little shot in the dark based on the fact that we kind of know what the records sound like, so we're just gonna have to kind of go 
we yeah. recommend you do it with this. What is that? The HT Studio 20? This one, the yeah. venue. Yeah. Yeah, HT Studio 10, no, 20. That's, five, nine that's nine. 500 pound. Well, there you go. Well, that'll work though. Yeah, because it's got ISF on it, and that's the infinite shape, infinite shape function, I Which believe. It's British to American. American, yeah. so we can just slam that over to the right and hope we get boogie-esque tones. Okay. And we'll put some pedals in front of it. There's some reverb in that's there. Got, it's got built-in gain as well, so that should be helpful. Let's do it. We don't have an OD1. No, but there's an OD3, 75 okay. squids. So 75 squidlingers. That might be a shout. I think if, you, if we pair well, there's it, the OD1X. That's a bit more expensive by about 40 pounds, and it's chrome and sparkly. We need something like a chorus. Well, it's chorus ensemble here. All right, well, look at the chorus ensemble, the CE5. For 70 pounds? Mm-hmm. Okay. We've got the gear, do we have any idea? Who knows? We're back in the video room. We are. And tonight, uh, today, on tonight, on... On the Tonight <laughs> Show with Matthew Hornby. <laughs> on Tonight Show, it sounds like. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're back in the video room. Um, today, trying to sound like a Kurt Cobain from the ultimate Nirvana. It's pretty tall order, I must admit. It is. Um, so before we even go anywhere near the gear we've chosen, I'm an idiot. And in the, <laughs> in the shop, I was, <laughs> I was talking about the OD1 quite a lot. This is an OD3. Um, Kurt Cobain didn't use an OD1, he used a DS1. And DS1 is what we have here, which is the correct pedal. So, <laughs> let's get out of the way and move Well, on. it's good to be honest it is, with it your is. audience. As we were saying before, the difficulty with this tone is because the gear was so oddball, especially in the studio, who knows what they might have actually ended up using. for like one rig which will kind of sum up a lot of his main yeah. sounds recorded and because he um, did a lot of weird stuff it's not that simple um, but I, did, I did read that he, he had he smashed up so much gear that every gig he did just sounded different because yeah. he just had different gear um, but the, he used a boogie preamp which we can't get um, but the captain rightly pointed out that something like a black star HT studio or something like that with the ISF control might may get us closer into the realms of that American valve tone. So we opted for the Blackstar HT Studio 20, yeah. um, which is a great sounding uh, amplifier. It's two channel with reverb and yeah. it does the job. We've actually used both channels for different riffs on this. as we picked out earlier. This is the most expensive guitar we've ever used on a sound like. For the person who cared prob arguably least about their sound. Yeah, but what's what I really like about this is you can tell it's an 800 pound guitar. Oh, it's, yeah, it's, it's a lot Like, it does a lot of cool stuff with the switching, which I still haven't necessarily 100% worked out, but it plays really good, and it's holding its tuning really well. Um, so that's the kind of thing you can expect when you get a Mexican Jaguar. But this is as close as we could find, as close as we could get to hopefully sound like Coco Bay. Yeah, so let's give you, this is how it sounds on the clean channel. So straight in. Mm -hmm. 
So it does loads of stuff with the wheels and the different switching and things like that. We managed to get close to that lithium sound by having the chorus with the rate and depth on really low. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And just having it sitting there to it's double very, up that like sound. A very slow. Yeah, yeah. that. It's kind of got that vibe about it. But the other thing that's really cool about the amp is if we go over to the overdrive section, we've got the gain on pretty much, there's nothing there, um, with the volume on quite high. It's got a bark to it. It does, yeah, yeah. I actually really like this guitar with that setting, just mm. really kind of... It's really, yeah. really nice. But then to get that, it's almost like, I don't want to say cheap because it's not, but it's got a really fizzy overdrive as Kurt Cobain on, his, on the records. It's really like, like we were saying, throaty and just a bit it, harsh, isn't it? Yeah, I, I think if that's probably the, the only way to describe it. Is, yeah. is, is, but it is an, it's a nice sound. It's not like a horrible sound. No. Um, it definitely hurts the ears though. I think yeah. on record it sounds really good and live it would, but when you sat this close to the amp, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's pretty, pretty fierce. But if you want to push it on and then... Push. Yeah. Kind of sound yeah. really, really well. Um, and then you add the chorus to it and it does that kind of <laughs> classic Kurt Cobain chorus, weird distortion. <laughs> Obviously, there's none of the, the no, he didn't do that. pinchy pinch, but it's with only two pedals. Bearing in mind that's the Boss DS1 and the Boss CE5. I don't know. It's pretty good. Yeah, I think it's a good rig to get. This isn't super like overdriven, but we can get really spangly cleans. It's got it's probably quite a good like indie rock kind of rig. Yeah. Um, if you threw in a delay pedal. Yeah, and I think by blending the DS1 with a tiny bit of bite from the amp is getting us even closer to that kind of grungy sound. Yeah. And what I always associated grunge with when I was younger was really muffled, non clear sounding guitars. But actually it's the other way around, at least from doing this video, it seems like it's just a lot of gain and a lot of noise, but it's well, not necessarily undefined, if you know what I mean. Yeah, Nirvana like have that. They got they kind of had the punk energy really, and I think some of the other grunge bands, well, in, that were associated. I mean, there's Pearl Jam, Soundgarden, all that mm. the same thing. But yeah, Nirvana definitely had the kind of. They gave a lot less of a. I don't know what word I can use instead, but either way, they didn't care as a much. Flip. Yeah, I have to say though, that, like the sounds of the records mm. is still like very relevant right now. It's yeah. still really awesome. You yeah. Know? Um, so. So, but I guess what we are saying at the same time is. Because the gear is so oddball, we have tried our very best to sit in the room, listen to the records, and then play it through this gear and get it as close as we can. We want you to tell us how well we did. Yeah. So, so comment in the comment section below, and um, we'd just love to hear what you think and, and how well we, we played. Um, but yeah, all the links to all this gear as well is in the description box. So if you are interested in any of this stuff, then you can find it. Um, but yeah. I've been Matt. I've been Rabir. And this has been Sounds Like on Anderson's TV. Goodbye. <laughs> That's it. Hey, That's same, right. same sound. Yeah. Ryan Adams. Run to you.
fucking tune. Okay. Who put them together in a room? Kurt Cobain and Brian Adams. Uh, they have one guitar. Okay, okay, okay. 